Get in now. Let's talk about it. So I'm in the car right now, and what we're going to do is going to jump over to some clips I filmed earlier, where I sort of talk about some of the code elements. I'll admit it's quite a deep dive into the code, but I want to keep this active and tell you all about it. And then tomorrow morning you'll be seeing me in the car doing the commands, showing you what we can do. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you're look at how what I know about my car. So my car is a relatively new. Mercedes-Benz, I want to say it's 2020 edition, um, they come with something called Mercedes Me and have some Mercedes-Benz app features so you can control the car from the app. Okay, so what do we know? So if I draw the car, we'll call this the car, we know that Mercedes-Benz have got a server, the MB server. We also know that they've got an iOS app. So in order for the car to send data about itself to the phone, so I can view the current state. So I can view whether the car is unlocked or locked or whatever. The car must have two-way communication with the server, right? That's given. But then there must also be some sort of two-way communication with the app. My guess is the two-way communication with the app is to Mercedes-Benz's server. To be able to do any of the advanced features like unlock or lock, um, you have to have a paid subscription. I don't have the paid subscription and I've been able to bypass that using this which is quite interesting. So they're doing that check on device. So they're doing some checks on device. I wonder what other checks they're doing on device. We'll get into them. So what can we intercept and look at easily? So we know that this has to happen. So the car has to send data and receive data from their servers. Because it also does like updates and stuff like that and knows when it needs a service. They send me an email when it needs a service. So it's clearly sending a lot of data to Mercedes-Benz's servers. So my question is, we can't look at this section easily. We have no way of intercepting the car to Mercedes-Benz server communication. This side is a different story, isn't it? So we've got the iOS app. And on the iOS app, we can intercept the network connection. We can go into something like Proxy Man or Child Proxy and see what web requests the app is making and see if we can work anything out. And I think that might be the next line of inquiry. I think we're gonna look into this. And what I've done here is I've got my phone connected to the computer. So on my device, I'm gonna to go to the Mercedes, Mercedes application. And as the application opens, you could see the car here. So as you can see, there are a lot of network requests coming from the car, including stuff saying what the capabilities are, all of that sort of stuff. Some of this sort of stuff explains whether I have accepted a user agreement and stuff. But what we want to know, when I send a command to the car, what actually gets triggered here so that I can send it? So if I unlock the car, that's interesting. That says it's processing, but I'm not seeing, so that's unlocked the car there. But I don't see here any additional requests that um, seem to imply the car has been unlocked. If we go back down here, there is a web socket. So I don't know if you're familiar with web sockets, but essentially they're ways of, they're two way communication between a device and the server. My guess is this web socket is where all the traffic's coming from. Let's jump into this. So actually, if you look in the web socket, you can see there's some binary data. So, but you can see that it's version two, okay. And you can see that there's data. This data appears to be in binary. If we change the preview to hex. Okay, let's see what we're getting here. So what is this garbage? Re but this is registered user ID with claims. App twin actor was initiated. Okay, this one's quite a big. This is one whole lot of data. Okay, what can we see here? Some roof status. Okay, my guess is this is the network traffic that we need to be looking at. We need to be connecting to this WebSocket. Though this WebSocket appears to be entirely in something that we can't quite understand. I actually happen to know what this is. It's known as ProtoBuff. So ProtoBuff essentially is a way of compacting, kind of like JSON, um, down. So if your key is always going to be number one, you could just say it's value number one. So you can iterate over it that way. And you don't actually need to know the name of the field. Um, so you create like a protobuf builder. So here's the example implementation. Implementation. You got a message with a person, name, ID, email. A protobuf definition definition would look something like this: ID, 
name, email, build, and then you output binary raw data to send over the socket. It's more streamlined and space efficient. Probably also works better for high, high data flows. That's instantly gonna make this harder. If we're talking in protobuf, we're not gonna easily be able to interpret this and make this human readable. However, we can understand the concept and look at it. So if we have a bit of a jump around and stuff, we could see all the data's here. So we just need to process this in a nicely formatted way. Right, okay, so what I've got here is, I'm, I've got the WebSocket set up and I'm just about to connect to it. So we're just gonna jump on that now. If we connect, oh, it's disconnected, 400. So I've just tried to connect to it, as you can see, I've got the token, the authentication token there. It's not happy. So in the app, I'm just gonna copy some of the other things. So I need like, so clearly I need to be sending and setting more keys than just the WebSocket token. I'm not so concerned about you guys getting the JWT because by the time you get the JWT, it'll be long expired. So I'm just taking out what are essentially return carriages at the start of these. Okay, perfect. Now we've connected. We've had some binary data that says it's set up a session. We've got some session information that seems to have come through. So we've now been able to connect. But the key thing that we've done when we were connecting was we've had to set all these additional parameters. So we know the socket checks that it's connected to a car, to an iOS app, all that sort of stuff, and also checks the authentication. If we send something like back to it, it'll probably go in, it'll probably spit out a, so we sent an empty there and it's not sent anything back. But if we said like an A, do we get something, oh, we got back, we got back a binary. Um, A could not unmarshal received request A from WebSocket message. Okay, so it's clearly running in some protobuf. I've written already some very basic, it's a very simple, I say very basic, very simple. It's become quite complicated, I've been playing around with it. But essentially I've got some scripting that allows me to make this socket turn into something that can be human readable. Let me jump over and do that. Get that all set up for you and we'll look at that. Okay, so here we go. So I'm remoted into the remote system um, where I've got the socket set up. I've written all this code, so it's pulling in some auth data from some auth function, which has got all the headers and it's accessing all the auth tokens. I'm not gonna show you that because I don't want to reveal the tokens. Um, we're creating the WebSocket, we're opening the WebSocket. Um, we're reading binary messages. We're converting, we're doing via, we're doing device series lots. We're doing WebSocket serialization on these messages to work out what they are. I'm outputting some logs just to help me understand what's going wrong. Anything that's going wrong. wrong. So in theory, is if I connect, you'll see over here, tracking, claims, app tractor was initiated, initialized. We don't, well, this is interesting. I've noticed this. You don't often get the current state of the car by default. Um, but as you can see, we're just getting five, which is an update message. It's keeping the car connected. Um, so if we jump back over to Proxy Man, where it's gone. Um, so I've jumped back over to Proxy, Ma Proxy Man, and I've got this endpoint cars. This gives me the cars. So this sees the two cars that are in the system that I have access to. So we have all of the field. The way I've written it is I've got all of the fields for every value. So for average speed from start, Display value is 23, speed units 2, double value is 37, 37. I don't know which values are key yet, but we're essentially showing all of the values here. And in theory, we can send a command back. So I do that. We make this a post request. So I have an endpoint down here, which is a post car command with second command being optional. It takes in this command and locates the action for it. Okay, so I've done some updates to the system now. I've got this car v2 endpoint, which allows me to post the command and get back the valid response, the right key. So if I say doors unlock, it's going to return back the vehicle lock state, followed by the lock state of the car. So this is a this is taking in that double value. So we're taking in that double value and translating that. A lot of the things seem to be a double value. They seem to be able to have more than one state. The, uh, the car is not locked or unlocked it's locked partially locked fully locked engine locked or unlocked stuff like that and translating the differences is quite complicated but now if i send this command it takes a while because we're sending the command and then we're waiting for a reply on the web socket and you can see here that it says the vehicle state doors unlocked if i change this to 
locked. It'll send and we'll get back. A door's locked. So we're in state three. State zero is some sort of um, engine lock, I believe. But essentially, this is sending the doors lock command and looking at the vehicle response and sending back the vehicle response. So I'm doing some formatting between which commands equate to which keys in response. But that's made that a lot easier. So what we think we'll do is now is we'll jump into the car and I'll show you a bit about what I can do, what sort of things I can get past, all that sort of stuff. Right, okay. So welcome back to anybody who's come back from about 20 minutes ago or something like that. Um, but I've got the computer. I've got the computer. It's up here. I've just got it up here. I should leave it down here. And we're going to go through what I can do. So right now the car is unlocked. You can see that. When I send the lock command, the car is now locked. I think I'll be able to open the door, but I think it's going to set the alarm off. Nope, it didn't unlock the door. So now I've relocked the car. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but in my very badly built AI image, the door is open, so we can track which door is open and all that sort of stuff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate that we can still do these functions while the engine is running. So I had to unlock the car to get the engine to start, but now that I've done that, I can lock it using the buttons down here. The car is locked. It's not actually locked in the same way. Um, it's in like an unlocked state. Which is interesting. So when I press this lock button now, it'll fully lock. But I can, I can still get out. The door's unlocked. I'm just going to relock it to make sure it's locked. But I can still get out. I can just do that. We'll relock it again. Now, using just the web commands, I'm going to unlock the car. So we could demonstrate that a different way. First off, I'll demonstrate some of the window features. You can see the window here. So I'm interjecting with a bit of video here. So when you lock the car, this is what I saw in my UI. Where has it gone in? But if you try and start the engine... Oh, it's done it this time. Last time it was complaining about the keys not being in the car. So I was wondering if this had got something to do with it, but clearly not. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, I'll just show you a bit more of the UI. So I've got the tyre pressures, so I've got all the tyre pressures mapped out to all the sort of tyres. Down here, you see a very detailed layout of car. You've got the window control options, closed, ventilate and open. I think they require the car to be locked and the engine not to be running. So if I do that, I'll do this. And i do that. I think I can now do some of these. There you go, there's, I've ventilated the windows. These require the car to be turned off. However, unlocking and locking the car does not require the engine to be off, which I think is bizarre. You can also do stuff like deselecting parameters on the car. I've only mapped these three at the moment. Stop the car alarm, deselect the tow, deselect the interior. But there are others, and I'm sure I'll get into them in part two. Ah, see, now it's doing it. So look, now when you try and start the car, it just says place key in marked space. Key is in marked space. I didn't do this a minute ago, but I think that's to do with the fact that it's locked. Now the car alarm's going off. And we can demonstrate the deselect car alarm. And now the car alarm's no longer going off. Oh, it is now. But you get the idea. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is if I lock the car, so the car is locked, if I put the window down, I can demonstrate this by putting my hand out and doing the handle on the outside. I'm not sure how well you can work that out, but I'm pulling the handle. It's locked. But I can unlock the car using the API. And now, that all works while the engine's on. Which I think is a bit of a security problem. Right, so there are a lot of other commands I can send. So I can do all the sort of um, tire pressures. I can even reset and change what they are in the system. I can start and stop the engine. I've not mapped any of these right now. And I think this video is going to be long enough as it is. So they'll be coming in part two. If people are interested, like, watch, and subscribe. And I'll be doing a part two, and I'll show you all about it. But... Um, the code, all of the code that I've used in this video is available on GitHub. It's not the best, I'll be honest. It's been quite a rushed piece of project. But the code is there if you want it. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And thank you for watching.